Let's talk about countercurrent flow in fish kills. So the principle here is that the blood flows through the gill lamellae capillaries in the opposite direction to the flow of the water. Um, the purpose of this is it maintains a diffusion gradient of oxygen and carbon dioxide over the whole length of the gill lamellae. This is an extremely clever mechanism and produces extremely efficient diffusion. Now, this follows the principles of efficient exchange of gas, which is that you ventilate the respiratory surface, and ventilation is movement of the respiratory medium, being it air or, in this case, water, over the respiratory surface, which is the gildamelli, or in you, the alveoli. Next principle is that you have a large surface area for gas exchange. Um, you have a lot of gildamelli on the gill filaments, the final principle is there is a short distance for diffusion is that the epithelial cells are very thin around the gill capillaries. Now the problem the fish has is that the uh, percentage of oxygen in the um, water is about 0.6%. This means that there's a very low partial pressure of oxygen. Now if we look at what happens when you have concurrent flow, that is when the water flows in the same direction to the blood, now the blood is returning from the fish, um, from the rest of the fish's body, where oxygen has been consumed in the mitochondria and has been turned into water. So this has reduced the partial pressure of the oxygen in the tissues. Therefore, it's reduced the partial pressure of the oxygen in the blood because the oxygen has come out of the blood and diffused into the tissues. The blood then goes back through the heart and then returns um, and is pumped through the gill capillaries. Now, the blood, if it moved in the same direction as the water, then I've represented the oxygen in the water as the um, purple blobs. So the oxygen is going to diffuse down its concentration gradient into the blood as the blood is traveling alongside the water. Now, as that does that, oxygen will go into the blood and then more oxygen will diff diffuse into the blood until there is no concentration gradient, until the concentrations of oxygen in the water and the blood are the same. Now if they flow in the same direction, and what we're going to see is that if we plot a graph of distance along the capillary and we put oxygen concentration in the water, the oxygen concentration in the water is going to fall and the oxygen concentration in the blood is going to rise until they reach an equilibrium. Now, however, if we have a circumstance where we take the blood and instead of it going in the same direction, it goes in the opposite direction, get right, in the opposite direction to the water. Well, in this case, as the blood travels in the opposite direction, it's always going to encounter water with more oxygen in it. So the water, the oxygen will diffuse across. Into the blood, so it will always encounter more oxygen. So oxygen will continue to diffuse across into the blood until the blood leaving the gill capillary will have the same concentration as the water entering because there will always be a concentration gradient because the blood going in this direction will always encounter water with more oxygen in it and the water going in this direction will always encounter blood with less oxygen in it. If we repeat the same graph as we had before Again, distance along the capillary and concentration of oxygen. Well, in this case, the blood, the concentration of oxygen in the blood is going to rise constantly as it goes 
along the capillary, whereas the concentration of water in the concentration of oxygen in the water is going to fall because the water as it's traveling along the gill capillary will always be encountering blood with less oxygen in it. And this produces extremely efficient exchange. Hope you that made sense and thank you for watching.